Hey, my name is Matt Storr and I repair saxophones for a living, and this is a video made possible by you guys, thanks to your contributions to the Open Source Saxophone Project. Thank you very much. Uh, today I would like to show you guys how to make uh, stick shellac, from natural stick shellac, out of de-waxed shellac flakes. Um, and you can get this stuff in bags. Uh, this is a pound of it, right here. Um, and it'll last you a good long while unless you're repairing horns for a living. Um, I initially started to make this stuff because uh, I was using natural shellac sticks that I purchased and they were pretty expensive um, and I was looking for uh, a cheaper way to do it. And so I got taught how to make shellac sticks on my own um, in several different ways and this is the way I came to. This is not the only way or the best way but it's just how I do it. Um, so this is cheaper than the natural shellac sticks you can buy. And you notice I keep saying natural shellac. Uh, there are um, lots of synthetic shellacs on the market as well, but I don't like those as much. Um, I've found that almost all of them that I've done the experiment on, if I like stand them up in a jar or a cup and leave them for a few months, by the end of a few months they'll have bent over in a U and uh, touch the table. So I feel like that's probably not a good thing for pad work that you want to last 10 years. Um, but, you know, that's I could be totally wrong about that. But um, I don't exactly want to run an experiment on my customers. So I use natural shellac, which is the traditional method. I like the way it smells. I like the way it works. I like the way it looks. And since making my own, I found that the stuff that I make out of flakes, whatever whatever happens, I'm not sure, perhaps the process of making the sticks themselves gives me a slightly more viscous uh, shellac at the end of it, a um, little less runny, a little less watery, um, and it's, like I said, it's cheaper than buying the sticks on your own. And you can control, you know, the exact shape. This is a really ugly one, uh, but, you know, you can make them really nice looking if you want. You can make them cylindrical. You can make them, like, super fat. Um, I've got all different sizes. Like, for doing smaller pads, I'll use, you know, a fairly small stick, um, like, perhaps like this one. Uh, for big pads, I use like a really like giant like sort of it uh, because then it doesn't burn down so quickly. Um, so you can you know control all that stuff and make it look exactly how you want to look. Now the ones we're going to make today are going to look a little bit ugly because we're not going to spend a ton of time shaping them, but they work uh, just the same. So what you're going to need is some de-waxed flak, uh, de-waxed shellac flakes, and I use a pan, and then you're going to need a smooth flat hard, slick uh, surface with a lot of uh, ability to hold on to thermal energy. And you'll see why when we use it. This is a granite surface plate that I bought from Lee Valley. Um, it's fairly cheap and it's kind of handy to have in the shop. You could also, if you wanted to get something a little cheaper, um, you know, you could even use a marble countertop or a granite countertop, but you can go to those places that install that stuff and get scraps for cheap. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is a torch. So this is how I do it. Um, I get myself a pan of flakes, and then I melt a line down the middle. And you can see I'm moving it evenly back and forth. I'm not trying to like boil it off or like make it you know super liquidy. Just melting a line down the middle to get stuff to start to stick together. And then you. Kind of dump flakes on top of that stuff, get it all stuck to itself. And then you do it again. And when this stuff is like really hot, you know, you can see it gives off some smoke. I wouldn't do it underneath like a smoke detector or your roommates might not like the smell. I personally like the smell. Um, and you don't want to touch it when it's like boiling hot. Um, it is a thermoplastic adhesive. Uh, which means that when it's hot, it's sticky, so it'll stick to you while it cools down, and you can't really get it off, um, and it'll you know, impart all of its thermal energy to you and leave you with, with a uh, blister, which is inconvenient. And I've never had a problem, but I mean, I, I know that this stuff can light on fire. Um, I think you got to try pretty hard, and it's pretty easy to put out, but do be aware of that as well. So you can do, you know, the bigger you want to make the stick, the more times you would repeat the process you see here. 
we're not going to make a super big stick right now, um, just because there's no reason to make the video that long, since it's basically doing the same thing over and over. Um, but you can make pretty large slack sticks. Now the benefit of a small one is that it's easier to control and heats up faster and then cools down faster and you can be a bit more precise with it as far as like your application to the pad. Um, benefit of a larger one is that you can get more shellac onto a pad quickie, uh, more quickly uh, and okay so now you see I'm lifting up I don't know if it's hard to see. You basically just kind of lift in and you can lift the whole thing out after it's cooled down a little bit. It'll still be super uh, bendy. And then you heat up the flakes and try to kind of melt them together. And try not to get onto your surface plate or whatever it is you're using because um, you want that to stay cool so that when you flip it over the shellac doesn't stick to it. And I'm like, I mean, I'm kind of touching the pretty molten part, and already at this point, it is not um, not too hot to touch. It's not comfortable, but it's not burning me. Um, oh, and as I was saying, the benefit of a larger one uh, is that you can get more shellac to flow onto a big pad more quickly. So um, I usually keep a couple sticks around, and we'll use them for different purposes. Like I've got small ones for palm pads and uh, larger ones for, you know, bell keys, especially like on something like a, you know, baritone. You can use uh, an awful lot of shellac really quickly. And you can see I'm starting to touch this stuff with my bare hands. It's not too hot. Um, I'm trying to kind of get it a little closer together and a little bit more uniform in thickness so that when I eventually melt it uh, to use, it will be melting in a uniform way. And you want to melt this all the way. You don't want to have any air bubbles in here or um, you know, little pieces of shellac sticking off the side if you can help it. Um, that stuff when you're heating it up over your alcohol lamp or torch or whatever to melt it onto a pad um, that stuff will uh, like bubble and hiss and pop, and uh, at least you know it's not fun to get some on you or in your face. But uh, what would really stink is if that got onto the side of your nice brand new pad that you're about to install because shellac doesn't really come off pad leather too well. So you'd probably just have to start over with that pad, which sucks. Okay, just about done here. Okay, so there you go. There is a nice big stick of natural shellac. Um, now you'll see it is definitely not too hot to touch, but it is extremely uh, bendy still. Um, you could make this into pretty much any shape you wanted pretty easily and then straighten it back out no problem. And just remember and think about that for what that means for your pad work. If you are doing pad work and you are you know heating it and then you like the way the pad is sitting and it's not doesn't seem to be moving but it's still warm to the touch. Um, when you go and move on to the next pad that pad is going to move under its own weight because shellac stays uh, plastic for an awful long time. Um, and that is something that you need to be aware of when you're doing your pad work. you got to hold that pad where you want it so that the pad settles and the shellac hardens exactly where you want it to be. Um, and this is really not that warm at all. This is like a lukewarm cup of coffee right now and you can still see it's still quite uh, plastic. All right, so that is how to make shellac sticks uh, on your own from shellac flakes. De-waxed shellac flakes. Remember that part. That is super important. Um, oh, and I've been rolling it around so much I've gotten some uh, flakes on it. So I'm actually going to give it one more pass. See these little flakes here? 
those won't uh, melt as evenly. Uh, so it's a good thing to just make sure that the surface of this is like glass smooth, um, you know, without any flakes or bubbles. Okay, there we go. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful, useful, informative. My name is Matt Storr, and I repair saxophones for a living.